Mr. Morgan's turn, and we're back with Lab 10, Moments of Inertia. So, let's look at the physics behind moments of inertia and angular momentum. We'll start by looking at our old friend linear momentum and its corresponding force we can write as F, which is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time, and that's equal to the mass times acceleration. And then for angular momentum, we can write an equivalence which instead of force, we call it torque, and it's R cross F, and this equals I, the moment of inertia, times alpha, the angular acceleration. And then again, I is our moment of inertia, alpha is our angular acceleration. I depends on shape, size, weight, so the, the lovely traditional example is you have a skater spinning, and they have their arms out. As they pull their arms in, their moment of inertia I changes, and so they start spinning faster. So in this lab, what we're going to do, we'll have some discs, and we'll have a hanging mass. We'll let our hanging mass fall, and as it falls, it will pull on the disc, providing a torque, giving an angular acceleration. And then we will put different objects, like rings, on top of this platform, which will change its moment of inertia. And so then we will calculate the moment of inertia of the rings beforehand. And with our data we get, we'll calculate our measured moment of inertia and see how well those two correspond. So we'll let our mass fall and rise. And as it falls and rise, we'll record the lines per second, which will make sense when we look at the apparatus. And that will tell us how quickly it's spinning. So that will tell us F, which is corresponding to angular velocity omega which will be F times pi over 100, which we get from there's two pi radians in a circle, and there's 200 lines on the disk we'll spin, so then we get pi over 100 times how many lines per second we got will give us how fast our disk is rotating. And then we'll repeat this three times. <clears throat> we'll do it once with the platform with no rings on it so that we can calculate the moment of inertia of just the platform. Then we'll put a small ring on and do it again and then a large ring, and we'll, then we'll remove the small ring and put a large ring on and do that. So then we'll calculate the moments of inertia by hand for each of these with their masses and radiuses in the lab manual. And then using the data get we get, we will calculate our measured value and compare them. So in our report, we will have three or six graphs. So you can make a graph that looks like this with two series, so omega versus time. And then you'll have data of when the mass is falling, and you'll get a linearly increasing slope, which we'll call alpha acceleration. And then when the mass hits the bottom, it keeps spinning, so it comes back up, starts rising again. We'll have a linearly decreasing slope, and we'll call this alpha deceleration. And we need the slope of each line separately, so if you know how to use series and Excel, you can plot them both on one graph, but if that's too complicated, you can do two graphs, one for acceleration and one for deceleration. And then you'll do those two graphs for each of these cases. So that's where we get three or six. Then using our data, we'll calculate the moment of inertia I and compared to the measure value we get in our experiments. And then we'll answer some questions on the handout. So let's go look at our setup here. So we have our tower here. And we have our hanging mass that we'll put over the edge like this. As this falls, the platform on top will rotate. And then I'll read off the numbers from this little box here. This will fall down. When it gets to the bottom, it will start coming up. And so how we did this to get data was I had a person watch. As I called out numbers, they wrote it down. And when they saw this change direction, they put a little star by the data point so that we knew when it went from acceleration to deceleration. So to get this to actually flow, I have to turn on the air. So it's going to get a little noisy. So and then to read the data, with the platforms on top, so we climb up carefully onto our table. And you can see here is our apparatus, so it's going to read lines per second. So I will hang this guy over the edge, and then we will let him go, just without any rings, and he'll start accelerating downwards. And then we can read off the number 77, 101, 124. We would do that while someone watches the object fall. 
very slowly. And then it hits the bottom uh, now. We saw it turn around and now it's coming back up. And so we record data until it stops right about there. And then that's our first case with no rings. And then what I do is we repeat the same thing. I take these small and large rings and I put them on the platform and then I would do the exact same thing. And that's how we get the data. So I provide you with an Excel sheet on Canvas that has the data for each, the platform, the large ring and the small ring. And I will see you in lab 11. Thank you for your time.